Hi Bonnie, YouTube, and visitors to Terralo3.com. This is a special video for uh, Bonnie. She's asking a question. She's asked me this question in, o over a period of time, and I want to use this opportunity to answer the question, obviously, but then to give a little more insight into how you can use Scripture, how you can use my website, how you can use my book, The Mystery Explained, to understand the wisdom what's going on right here this is really good stuff whenever you ask somebody with limited knowledge what's the difference between the spirit and the soul maybe they can give you uh, um, you know usually it's going to be kind of a short answer they're not going to have really much inf information this video is going to be filled with information to show you how you can even learn more about the relationships of the spirit and the soul by using scripture and the principles the Bible main characters and it this is going to sound a little bit complicated to some people I mean if you're used to eat drinking milk and you throw get meat thrown on you then you might get smothered covered up not be able to digest so on and so forth but as you continue growing in spirit in the spiritual things of God then these things are going to make more sense so look at them as seeds that are being planted and then we'll water them as we go along and then you God will cause the growth in time so this is what she she asked and it's kind of short and uh, actually prefer more detailed questions she writes soul and spirit I think I know the difference if the spirit moves you and time permits then make a video answer the question whenever so that's uh, she was in the chat room over at Revolution Radio she's a contributor to the newsletter I've known Bonnie for a really long time and uh, support of the research and really good researcher rabbit hole digger extraordinaire that's her that's the little coin phrase uh, that characterizes her because she's she's got her nose into everything she's digging around into everything this seems to be what's on her mind right now so still not quite following along so I'm just gonna have to give you the uh, the long version okay go back to Genesis 2 7 now we're answering the question about the spirit and soul and usually when you're going to these kind of things you're going to go back into Genesis and you're going to begin at Genesis 2 7 when God the Lord God see notice God's doing his work in Genesis 1 1 he I mean in Genesis 1 he rests Genesis 1 1 through 3 uh, 2 1 through 3 and then the Lord God picks up and creates Adam in the heaven that's associated with the creation that's already been made so the, the thing to realize in Genesis 2-7 is that the Lord God takes two elements. He takes the dust from the ground, that's the body part, and he takes the breath of life, which is the spirit part. This spirit breath of life is from the heavens. This dust of the ground part is obviously from the earth. The two are put together. So when you draw your two circles, let me give you an, an a, uh, idea of what I'm talking about here. When you draw your overlapping circles, we can go right here. Scripture is laid out in the image of a man. Scripture is laid out according to a spirit witness, a blood witness, and a water witness. Just like the tabernacle of Moses, separated by two veils. There's two veils in the tabernacle of Moses in the temple, and there's two veils within you. The veil between your spirit and your soul, and the veil between your soul and your body. Two veils. The tabernacle is laid out in the same way. This is the image of the man. This is the image of a man of your spirit, soul, and body. It's also the image of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So let's uh, let's go look at that. This is one of the first diagrams that you're going to find in the book, The Mystery Explained, right here. This is this diagram holds the key. This is the primer for breaking God's code. It's right in Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God, spirit witness, created the heaven, blood witness, and the earth, water witness, spirit, soul, body. Turn these upwards, and you have the image of a man. Let's see how that works. We're going to go right here. This is one of the first diagrams in the book, too. So this one is left like it is. This just continues to be the singularity. The singularity that was the Word became the Father and the Holy Spirit. That's Luke 1.35. The 
power from on high and the Holy Spirit. The power from on high shall overshadow you, shall overshadow the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Child is the only begotten Son of God right here. So the Word became the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The same way that the earth of Genesis 1-1, that's a singularity, became the heavens, the earth, and heaven in between. Genesis 1, uh, Genesis 1-8. So I have some of these pulled up for you right here this is the primer right here in the beginning God created the heaven this is a singular heaven and the earth that's just because of this translation and the earth was formless the original earth was broken to recreate what happened in the infinite realm when Satan murdered Adam the earth is Adam the earth was conformed to the image of broken Adam in the infinite realm so that the restoration could take place so this, that's the diagram that we're looking at right here. The waters above the expanse, the waters below the expanse, and heaven that was begotten in between. So you have heaven of Genesis 1-1. This is the highest heaven right here, the heaven. Then that's the highest heaven. This is heaven of this creation right here. That's why in uh, 1 Kings, what is it, 826, maybe off there. Then you have the heaven and the highest heaven that cannot contain God. He's infinite. He's in the infinite realm. That's why he speaks to us through these witnesses. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit testify for the word. That was made flesh in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Lord God of Genesis 2. He's the one that formed Adam. God is the one that reconstituted. He created the heaven and the earth. And then when that was broken, he reconstituted it. That's the work he's doing in Genesis 1.1. So whenever we get back over here to, to uh, Genesis 2, then the Lord God, the Lord God, in the account that the Lord God made the earth and heaven, this is our local earth and heaven, associated with the creation of forming of Adam. Adam represents the earth of Genesis 1-1, like Christ, the man from heaven, represents the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's the Word that's testifying. Okay, so that gives you a little Genesis background. And what we're going to be coming to, and the thing that you're going to want to put together, is that Eve plays an important role in helping you to understand the nature of the soul and the spirit and the body. She is the helper. Notice right here, it's not good for a man to be alone. I will make a helper. Well, we see this somewhere else, too. We see this in, uh, don't have this one pulled up for you. This is uh, uh, John chapter 14, is it verse 26, where Christ is going to send the helper. The helper, the Holy Spirit, is the water witness of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, just like Eve is the water witness of Adam, her seed, and the um, where she is the water witness. When you recognize these as water witnesses, that's going to be a big help. Now, let's go look. This is the example that I provide when you understand the relationships of the Father, who is the Spirit witness, and the Son, who is the blood witness, and the things that, see, these are Bible principles. That's how I, I uh, characterize them in my book, The Mystery Explained. Main characters, Father, and son. Now the things that they are saying back and forth to one another give us clues. God does not place all the information with any single witness. He gives a little bit to each so that the testimony of all the combined witnesses, when you know who's a spirit witness, who's a water witness, who's a blood witness, their combined testimony gives us the answers to what we're looking for. Just as the father has life in himself, so he gave to the Son also to have life in his self. And he gave authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. The Father is the Spirit witness here. The Son is begotten. He's the begotten one. The Holy Spirit is the helper. The life is transferred from the Father that is in himself. This tells you, because of the relationship of the Spirit and the soul here, that the life originates in your spirit. And that is given to the soul from the spirit. It comes from this, it's an attribute. 
characteristic feature of the spirit given to your soul the same way that the father gives it to the son then he the father gave him the son authority to execute judgment because he is the son of man this is where people get really thrown because they're thinking that this means something to do with incarnating on the earth it has nothing to do with that the son of man is Christ Jesus the father son and the Holy Spirit that I just showed you in the diagram right here heavenly Adam this right here is Christ Jesus father son and Holy Spirit this is a realm that stands between the infinite realm where we are gods and this earthly realm where we are mere men put these three together and you have the man of God the infinite realm is broken down into God to come God who was God a God who was and God who is can you guess who's the begotten aspect here God who is is the begotten aspect here the reason God must do this the reason you see us in Genesis 1 conform to our image us is because God who is is speaking for all three of these this has nothing to do with the angels or anything that people read into that read into the text there so the earth is a man son of man the same way that you are a son of man having a spirit soul and a body so when scripture is making a reference to the Christ being the son of man that way it's because he's the blood witness the son is the blood witness the end result is for all of these blood witnesses they all enlarge they all enlarge until the son becomes the word again the father is going to disappear completely the Holy Spirit is going to disappear completely they're going to have the same relationship the same singular relationship as the word when the process is complete your soul was a temporary thing it's begotten then it enlarges between your spirit and your body until it overcomes both so eventually you're going to be in the image of Adam from Genesis 2 7 whenever the breath of life was taken the dust of the ground was taken he became a living soul he didn't have a spirit he didn't have a body he became the living soul the singularity he the, the singularity included Eve it included her seed Adam had to be laid down on the altar and cut in two the same way that the earth was cut in two the same way the word was cut in two that's explained extensively in my book the mystery explained how creation and heaven are laid on the altar and this universe this, our universe here is broken the Trinity aspect you see here they appear everywhere in the Bible people think the Trinity is just the Father Son and Holy Spirit not true they're everywhere this is just the pattern and like I just showed you even scripture follows this pattern 39 books 39 books I'm sorry 39 books 13 books 13 books the book of Acts is a veiled book that hides the mystery that's inside here the Old Testament saints could never see the mystery God hid everything about our gospel our gospel is according to the revelation of the mystery everything according to the re revelation of the mystery was revealed after Christ was raised from the dead otherwise Satan would have known he would never crucified him Satan didn't know that we were going to be raised with Christ we were going to be baptized into his body seated in the heavenly places didn't know about our mystery translation to immortality that we're going to judge the world and the angels he didn't know any of that stuff that Paul revealed in his epistles it's not that Paul really revealed them he was the writer the Bible writer just like all the other witnesses in Scripture but he's the steward over the body of Christ in the New Testament just like Moses is the steward over Israel here in the Old Testament Peter is the steward over all those obeying the gospel of the kingdom 2,000 years ago he's standing on the sea of glass in front of the lamb we are members of the lamb's body Elijah is going to gather together the late reigns bride James 5 7 early reigns Peter late reigns Elijah there it is right here so everything is in scripture is laid out according to the same son of man image son of man that means it has a spirit soul and a body Trinity testifying for a singularity who testifies for the singularity the blood witness in every case that's the way it works in scripture okay so let me um, get back over here a little bit so there's your little um, you can do this hunt with hundreds of scriptures this is just the one that shows that the life is passed from the spirit 
and then uh, you understand that the helper is the Holy Spirit just like Eve they're both water witnesses and th that is the vehicle of locomotion there's a chapter on that in the book the mystery explained to help people understand how all water witnesses are vehicles of locomotion here's one of the charts God's essence love light life the realms God's infinite realm that I just showed you realm of the word this atomic creation heaven seven on earth this atomic creation Father Son and Holy Spirit you see in God's infinite realm there's God's three witnesses Revelation 1 8 go and read it the Lord God of Jesus Christ is these three witnesses just like the Father Son and Holy Spirit the mistake that many people make is that these three witnesses of God to come God who is and God who was that's the three witnesses testifying for the Almighty many many people have been deceived into believing the Father Son and the Holy Spirit testify for the Almighty whenever this is the word you see the words not God the words the Son of God the word of Genesis of John 1 1 through 3 and 14 it's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the flesh. In the image of a man. According to the Apostle Paul. According to uh, his writings. Then uh, the Adamic creation. Same pattern. The thrones. Throne of God. Christ's throne. David's throne. There are pictures of that in the book. At the transfiguration. Elijah is the spirit witness. And he's the prophet. Christ is the blood witness. He's the king. Moses is the water witness. And he is the priest. The last, this is the last, is the first. Because what you're looking at are incarnations of Adam and Eve with the Lord God that created them from Genesis 1-1. Again, all the diagrams, there's 80 of them, that show these things. It shows, you know, the, the highlights of what you can cram into 400 pages. What you can cram into 400 pages. And the rest of it, then each person that's watching this video each one that that goes through the book the mystery explain then you're going to see different aspects of the mystery from the others I see I'm showing you from my perspective but there are things that you must show me from your perspective we all must testify our voices together raised up like angel song we testify and we hear the testimony of all of our brethren testifying within us and on the outside of us to get the full picture nobody gets the full picture nobody walking around on the planet anyway no members of Christ's body like myself and the people reading these books uh, reading this book here you have your perspective so things may be a list of appear a little bit different because we're looking at the precious mystery jewel from different perspectives and through different facets so you're gonna see it a little just a little bit different but then together combine then we're going to be able to actually see the mystery here's a here's another chart the message of truth the law and the prophets in the Old Testament Paul's gospel that's the gospel of Christ shed blood do you think that Christ preached salvation through forgiveness in his shed blood in Mark 1 no he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom this gospel the gospel of water baptizing in water there's no water baptism for us we're baptized by the Holy Spirit into Christ that's how we become active participants in his death burial and resurrection that's what Paul's writing about the gospel of the kingdom is about something else completely these are intercessors these stand before the throne we are in the lamb when you read Revelation look at the lamb you're in the lamb already you're a member of his body this is the bride of Christ John chapter 3 verse 19 they're the bride we're the body two different dispensations New Testament divided by a veil this first veil right here destroy the veil mix all this together and you have denominationalism that's what's out there and it's mixed together more than 20,000 different ways seeing the truth is placing the veils in the right places and it works according to God's numerology works according to well a lot of things now, the advantage that I have is these things have been seen for decades and um, that's why whenever you ask some of my questions they may appear a little bit complicated and the thing uh, the point that uh, David that's proofreading the mystery explained right now the point that he was making is that uh, he has to admit that he's not seeing he's been doing this for years he's not quite seeing 
some of the things are blind spots. That is always going to be true as long as you're reading, 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 and you're not sharing, sharing, sharing. You can, God is only going to open the doors so much while you're trying to read to fill yourself. Whenever you step out of that and you take these principles, you lay them out, and you share them with other people, they're going to be asking questions. And then you're going to be doing the research, like I am for Bonnie right here, to help others. And when it's in your heart to help others to see God's hidden wisdom, God is standing right there with you, working with you, and opening doors for you to see more and more and more. Because you're doing it to benefit the body of Christ, to help it become mature, the whole thing. Now, other people watching, as I'm helping Bonnie answering these things, using little parts of my book, then they're going to catch on too. They're going to see the pattern. Oh my goodness, I never saw it like that before. They're going to start putting more things together. Then I really encourage you guys to go to terlo3.com. And Project Black Star, yeah, that's the main deal right now. And this is very important. I live an inside job. But what we're talking about is down in this bottom section. If you will go through and begin with the two Gospels of the New Testament, the two churches, these are 15-minute videos, the four baptisms of the New Testament, you can separate the three baptisms for the Gospel of the Kingdom and our one baptism, going through this video. And then uh, the differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus, the, the differences between God and my Father art in heaven, I just showed you that a little bit, and then the mystery diagrams explain. This is these these uh, short videos here get you ready for my book, The Mystery Explained. By the time you make it through that exercise, then you're going to see these things much more clearly. You're going to understand the primer, the spirit, blood, and water, witness primer in Genesis 1-1. You are going to begin seeing these uh, witnesses everywhere so that you're going to be able to make your own charts. You're going to see witnesses I don't even see. That's the way that it works. A very good foundation has been built at terralo3.com to show you God's hidden wisdom. This particular question is about the soul and the spirit, the son and the father, the, the heaven and the heavens, the holy of uh, the holy place and the holy of holies. See, we can go right down the chart. We're talking about a blood witness that's begotten. All blood witnesses are begotten. All spirit witnesses come first with one exception and that's that's uh we're going to leave that open there's only there's one exception to the rule it has i'll just give you an, a, a hint there it has to do with the almighty things are kind of turned around it's explained in the book so um the difference between the spirit and the soul is the spirit always comes first the spirit is what's in god's hand that he fashions with your body so that your soul can be begotten then the life is given there from the Spirit. Well, obviously from God, but the Spirit, through the Spirit, is where the soul is going to get its life. And then the ability to judge. So you, I didn't pull this up for you. It just came to my mind to share it with you. Let me go, because I really want to share it with you. The, these are from uh, the diagrams from my book, The Mystery Explained. And I wanted to share with you. Uh, right here and some people are going to be uh, especially those uh, with denominationalism problems they're going to be put off by some of this stuff but the object of the mystery explain is to show you this this windows off just a little bit is to show you all these three witness mystery sets going from the macro these words are used throughout the book macro versions that's God his three witnesses, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, their three witnesses, all the way down to the smallest witnesses possible, from the largest to the smallest. And these are the witnesses inside of your body. Some people are, and these are administrations. There's a lower self inside of you, navel, spleen, and root. I realize that this is connected to Eastern religions and stuff like that. These would be chakras and but what you learn in the mystery explain is going to take this to the next level for the members of Christ's body that are connected to the highest heaven. The people that are using, the six day people that are using this information are connected to the heaven of Genesis 1-8. Big difference. Then 
realizing that you have a lower self in you and you have a higher self in you. But the reason I want to show you this is because this is where the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Christ in you, this is where they dwell in the heart, in your soul, the begotten aspect. Then God in him reconciling the world to himself. Right here. So this is New Jerusalem in you. Just like God hands down New Jerusalem to this creation in Revelation. Start at verse 21. This is handed down inside of you. So you are your own universe. This is the earth part. This is the heavens part. And this is the part that God's restoring right here. And he is sitting inside of Christ in you right here. So your access to God is not by looking up. That's the God of the world in the world. It's looking inside your heart. The eyes, the spiritual eyes, Christ in you open up. You wake up to that. You grow in the, the seeds are sown. You have the faith, then the knowledge, then the wisdom, and then you recognize God in him. This gives you access to the infinite realm and to heaven from within you through a series of umbilicals, which extremely advanced. I realize that. But God gives his wisdom bits and pieces here and there. And then he shows us the pattern, and then we're able to put it together. When we begin to enlighten others, with these things that's what's going to spur the growth so when you reach that plateau you have a period spurt of growth and it's a plateau and it just seems like you're on the plateau the answer is likely going to be that it's time to help others you do not have to know everything about the mystery to begin helping other people you only have to know more than they know now, as you're helping them God's helping you your abilities will grow so that you can help more and this becomes a snowball so that some members of Christ's body are going to grow, 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 outgrowing their, their body of Christ counterparts, seated, seated high in the heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. And um, which I can show you a thumbnail in that, and then I want to, uh, that is going to be the pictures where you see the pyramid, this right here. There's a picture of it right there. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to make this video any longer. But Christ up here, Whenever you outgrow your brethren, you end up up here with the apostles, prophets, teachers, rather than being at the bottom rungs of the pyramid here. The common stones are at the bottom. The more precious stones in the body of Christ pyramid are near the top. So those looking for the earthly rewards, you're going to wind up down here. Those that are trying to help others for the heavenly rewards, keeping your eyes focused above where Christ is, Colossians 3, start at verse 1. Those are the ones that are going to that God's going to open their eyes and show them these things so they can continue helping others to help them to snowball. Help them to Christ in you to grow, your consciousness to grow, your understanding to grow more and more and more. It comes through initially doing your own study and then after that helping others to do the same thing. So the larger that your ministry grows, the more God shows you. It's pretty much the way that it works. And just because I see all these things, it... it it's because of decades and decades and, and traveling around the world, Europe, and other countries, and showing people the differences between the gospel of the kingdom and the word of the cross gospel message, so that now all this work is coming together to be able to help others. So those, it's, um, I wanted to use this opportunity to expound just a little bit more and also answer. Um, that's the original right here. Bonnie's boats really needed a video unless I was going to sit here and write out four pages. So um, get more information by going to terlo3.com right over here. You decide you want me, you know, there, there, you can go through all these videos. You can go through um, my book and it, it can take a very, very long time. When you get ready and you want a tutor, you want me to be your tutor in Christ, you want to be able to write me every day or you want to be able to write me whenever you want, that's when you become a subscriber down here all you need is a newsletter only subscriber it's just $25 per year you're going through the information you have a question bam just like Bonnie you can send it to me and then uh, whenever whenever it warrants a video happy to do that we'll try to help others this is how we obtain our heavenly rewards by doing by helping people I have kind of a smile on my face while I'm saying that is uh, as the black star gets closer and closer and closer we are going to be taken 
the first Thessalonians 4 is going to happen and then we're going to be standing there we're going to go to get receive our rewards and then glory it's really a glor glorious glorious thing the members of Christ's body those obedient to our gospel you don't have to re prepare for anything we're taken before the sudden destruction of first Thessalonians 5 those that want the heavenly rewards for for helping others for helping those that we leave behind getting the word out we want the heavenly rewards for that these rewards are going to show up as precious jewels on our chest plates rings on our fingers jewels in our crowns and if we have enough power in our scepters in heaven those those uh, trotting around with the scepters are like superstars in heaven and treated that way by the regular hosts of heaven being a member of Christ's body means you're part of the lamb that makes you extremely special so I uh, that's pretty much what I want to share share with you and um, Bonnie I hope that you understand a little bit more you can get um, you can get more the answers by understanding the relationships between other spirit and blood witnesses in the scriptures so thank you very much for asking the question and um, I hope that uh, that this has been help, some help to you. And if it hasn't been, I mean, you know, if there's other questions that you have, please send them, and I will, you know, we'll come down here. Bonnie wrote on the 30 on the on August 1st, you know, unless you get it in today, with another question, I'll answer that too, and we'll make this a uh, a nice uh, send it to Brenda, and then she'll make it a nice article for the uh, coming newsletter. So th uh, thank you guys for all your support and I'll see you on the next Black Star update report or another video like this helping to answer questions.